Hey everyone, it's Mike, host of the Performance Matters podcast. You know what? I just got done wrapping up the initial edit on my fantastic conversation on employee engagement with friend of the show, Katie Bailey, and soon to be longtime friend of the show, Andy McManus. I got to tell you, we had a blast. <laughs> we laughed so much that my jaw is still a little sore, but we more importantly talked about trends on employee engagement and database trends, performance-based trends, how to blast, picked up so much information that I'm going to immediately use. And spoiler alert, they are about a month out from releasing an ebook on this that you're gonna wanna keep tabs on. So I encourage you to dive in on this one. There's so much good stuff here. And most importantly, thank you for tuning into the podcast. If you haven't given us a follow, please make sure to do so. And well, enough stumping, let's get to it. Have a great day. Are you ready to perform at your highest potential? Welcome to the Performance Matters podcast from GP Strategies, your workforce transformation partner. In each episode, we'll interview industry experts and explore best practices and innovative insights to help your organization improve performance. Hello and welcome to the GP Performance Matters podcast hosted by the world's leading talent transformation organization, GP Strategies, in partnership with the Learning Technologies Group. I'm your host, Michael Teal, and hey, I've been doing this now for about a year and a half, and it's been an honor and really a privilege to have a chance to sit and talk with a variety of thought leaders within the GP Strategies organization. And it's kind of a little secret hack here. You know, we talk about learning and development and tying this to business results. Today's topic is one that I'm passionate about, and it's enhancing employee engagement. And, you know, a lot of people will think this is a touchy-feely thing. It's soft, it's fuzzy. But today we're going to take a data-driven approach to this. We're going to get into some of the numbers, the hard quantitative numbers, and explore how this can, you know, really impact performance. To help us unpack this, we have two thought leaders from the GP Strategies Organizational Leadership Group and two East Coasters. I don't know if I can do the accents quite right, but first Hailing from Buffalo, New York, is one of our friends of the show, Katie Bailey. Katie, how are you doing? I'm doing great, and I'm pleased to be back. Thank you. Oh, we're honored to have you, Katie. By the way, for those that haven't met Katie yet, um, I encourage you to go back. She's been on our, our show a few times here. She is GP Senior Product Lead in our Leadership Development Practice. She is a certified human resource professional, and she is a longtime friend of the podcast. And I have to say, she's a very cool cool hang. She's a cool gal. I'm happy to have her here. Katie, do you have your employee engagement hat on? Are you ready to talk some serious dirt on this today? Yes and yes. Absolutely. Okay, cool. I'm going to be putting your, your knowledge to the test here. Now, Katie's not alone. We've actually brought in someone to write shotgun with her. Her name is Annie McManus. She is GP's Director of Culture and Engagement Strategy. She has a decade of experience in the study and practice of organizational leadership, employee engagement consulting, and project management. And oh, by the way, she's an engagement champion facilitator. Annie, we are honored to have you on the show. It is a pleasure. My first time on. So thank you for welcoming <laughs> me in with open arms. <laughs> awesome. I appreciate that. And um, you're from Philly, is that correct? Philly area. I was born in Georgia, raised in Jersey, and now over here in Pennsylvania, beautiful Bucks County. Okay, I'm not hearing the Philly accent, so I'll cut down on the Philly <laughs> accent then. It slips every once in a while, don't you worry. Okay. <laughs> I was I was going to start, uh, you know, breaking into my Rocky here, but um, I don't think anyone needs to hear that one. So, <laughs> we'll. Uh, but uh, honestly, we're we're honored to have both of you here. You know, again, we're talking about employee engagement, a data driven approach to this thing. So before we get into the serious meat and potatoes, I like to have a little fun with our guests, um, partly because of the fact that we have over 5,000 associates in the GP world. And a lot of us don't know each other other than just seeing a name on a, on a little team screen or an email here. So I like to just kind of personalize a little bit here. So I'm going to start here with you, Annie. And um, my challenge to you is you know, I've seen your credentials. You're you're very professional. You're fantastic. You're wonderful. But like, what's one fun or surprising thing about Annie McManus that um, we should know before we get into the the nitty gritty of your work life? Mm. 
Well, my management career actually began in college, and I was at the same time a manager at an ice cream store at the shore. <laughs> And also painting henna and managing the store next door. So I would go shift to shift, henna store to ice cream. And I had the best summers of my life there. So that is my (laughs) beginning of my management career before I even knew where I was going to end up professionally. I love it. The time of your life. Those are pretty, pretty, what would you call it? Divergent um, (laughs) industries right there. The the henna and the ice cream. Retail overall, though. You know, if we look at the industry approach, both both in the retail space. But yes, very different. (laughs) Very different. I'm telling you what, if if you're doing henna, you better be engaged or some bad things could happen. Uh, no <laughs> doubt on that one. I could see some neck henna happening or something like that. If somebody's <laughs> not happy, right? So, okay. Well, that's a good one here. Now, Katie, this is going to be a challenge for you because I know you've been on the show several times. We've learned lots of cool things about you. We know that you live and die with the bills. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I want you to do today is something a little different for our listeners, our okay. global listeners, by the way, okay. is what's one secret talent that you have that um, folks might be surprised about? Ooh, um, this is this is difficult. And I, I was, I, you know, I'm just going to say it. I feel like once it's out, it's out and everybody's going to know and it's no longer going to be okay. my secret hidden thing. I am an absolute karaoke fiend. I love karaoke. I love, I just want to say it one more time. And so for me, like, it's something I very rarely get to do. But then when I do, um, it is like, it doesn't matter if it's like a Motown classic or a Broadway hit or 90s rap. Like, I am there. I will know every word. In my baby book, my mother wrote, two years old, Katie sings the top 40. So in my mind, I've always had this like oh my gosh. memory, like lyrics. I will not be doing any, um, for everyone's benefit, I won't be doing any of that on the show. I won't say that I'm good, but I genuinely enjoy it. So that is my not your passionate are, hidden talent. Okay. So are you the person that everyone has to drag out of the karaoke place? They're like, okay, Katie's up for her fifth time today. Correct. Hope of Cabana, Correct. right? Yeah, no, no. I'm, I'd like to think it's like a full body <laughs> exercise. I'm running around the room. I'm passing the mic. Oh, to my people. God. My arms okay. are going everywhere. This probably isn't a surprise to anybody that knows me, actually. Never mind. Um, okay. Well, we need to get the innovation team and the organizational leadership teams <laughs> together for a summit because, yeah, I, I, I sense that the three of us could do some karaoke here mm-hmm. so i think there's um, an opportunity to leverage some of that virtual reality uh environment yes like, it would improve my learning or karaoke. <laughs> okay okay i'm gonna pipe in some music no we won't do that okay <laughs> let's get back to business here okay you've okay. got you got me going here i am um engaged if you will on this idea of karaoke i think we can do something with that and shake some of our academic image here at gp strategies so um let's workshop that one <clears throat> okay and, you know, our listeners, I'm sure they're, they're loving to hear us gab here, but they're here to hear some serious knowledge drop as well. So we're talking employee engagement, and I, I think most of us kind of get the concept of employee engagement. But before we just dive into this and start nailing it, uh, let's just, again, level set this concept for the listeners that are new to this and, and have dropped in. So who wants to just define it for me in, in non-academic terms, just practical terms? Uh, I see, Annie, you're raising your hand. So why don't you take a shot at that? Take a pass at it. Sounds great. So I will acknowledge there's many different definitions of employee engagement as you look across the market. But here at GP Strategies, we define it with our X model of engagement. So essentially, that's looking at both organizational and employee needs. Uh, It is both a contribution lens, how how I can give to the organization, help them achieve their goals, achieve those strategic strategies. But also, what am I as the employee getting from that? Am I generating, you know, a a way to provide, uh, you know, mission-based success, uh, have meaningful work, develop in my career, whatever that may be. So it's essentially this intersection of organizational needs and individual needs coming together for this mutually beneficial relationship. Very cool. Okay. So let me ask this to you too. Why are we talking about it right now? Um, Why is this still such an important topic? Well, personally, I think that it's always a great time to talk about employee engagement, but I do realize that I may carry a bias just based on my role at GP Strategies and just how much I personally um, enjoy the topic. But really, to your point, I think that, you know, 
there's a natural curiosity, I think, about what's happening with individuals and organizations right now. And we see the headlines all the time. We're hearing about still the great resignation and things like quiet quitting and, and all these different catchy phrases and screamy headlines. And, you know, it, it to me, and I would say I'll speak for Annie as well, like there's a curiosity, I think, that was peaked there and thinking about, um, you know, with everything that we're seeing in the media and with everything we know about the changing context of, of the of everything, right? So we navigated a global pandemic and supply chain disruptions and climate change and political unrest. Uh, the joke Annie and I made last week was like, the world's gone mad. Um, and uh, I think that makes it a really great time to think about because of all of these things that have happened um, individually, organizationally, and globally over the past few years, um, what does that mean for the world of work? What does that mean for organizations and for individuals? And luckily for us, um, we don't have to just hypothesize or suppose it, we have data that we can dig into um, that will really help us understand what's happening. And so um, one of the projects that Annie and I have had the chance to collaborate on is an ebook that's going to be released very soon that looks back at both pre-pandemic to now um, employee engagement data. Mm. So looking at the organizations that we work with for employee engagement and what has what, what's the story? What's changed? What stayed the same? And so we've uncovered several themes and trends uh, that we'll talk about today uh, briefly, and then it'll be expounded upon much more in depth in the ebook. But that's really why we're here to talk today. It's kind of a sneak peek of what's to come in the ebook and Ooh. really sharing um, from a data driven approach what we've what we've experienced. I'm excited about that because, man, things have changed. So, you know, at least I would say for those in the the knowledge worker space in the uh, corporate professional space. You know, obviously, if you're if you're manufacturing something, it probably hasn't changed as much for. But for I would say a, a pretty heavy majority of those in the U.S., the way that we work and the way we interact with our fellow employees, it's fundamentally changed. And you know, some ways in the good, some ways in the bad, but it's most definitely impacted employee engagement. Is that fair to say, Annie? Yes, I think that is very fair to say. I think as we we think about, you know, when the pandemic hit, everyone being forced remote, uh, having to take on these multiple roles of parent, te- you know, parent was already a, a, an inherent role. One would uh, but adding to that. <laughs> if you took, the, if you took <laughs> that one off, huh? okay. Role, exactly. <laughs> Teacher, uh, you know, <laughs> being able to essentially mentor your child and be all of those roles, uh, you know, having to figure out how we exist as humans. What does that look like? I remember the fear of going out to the grocery store at that time. I mean, it really, it had an impact and we are just beginning to see that, you know, our data, if you will, recover. We're starting to see some of those pre-pandemic levels of engagement return and it's been three years. So it has been a journey for for all of us, even, even those that are in the space where they have, you know, continued quote unquote business as usual. It's still impactful for them. Okay. So you've alluded to both of you are your you're crunching numbers. You're you're parsing through data. I'm gonna guess you're probably on Google, right? Kind of like I did back in college when you type in employee engagement trends. Is that kind of what you're doing in terms of trying to unearth data? Are you scraping the internet? Well, thankfully, we are doing a little bit of that. We are keeping up on our TikTok trends, what the latest <laughs> and greatest in the business are saying. Don't you worry. Uh, but yes, okay, good. Good, that good. and we do, you know, within our employee engagement practice, we work with clients every single day. So we have some great data seeing the trajectory of the clients we've been partnering with over the past few years uh, and how that's changed. So both a truly data driven, uh, you know, robust approach, as well as a little bit of social media in there. Yes. <laughs> and, and I will say too, some of the social media has informed how I look at the data. Like it's, it's caused me to think like, okay, well, is this really true? Are we seeing this in our data? Is this really happening? Or is it causing me to form a hypothesis, which I can then either validate or refute um, as we look at the data? So I think it does have a role, like even though it was kind of like, you know, like a kind of lighthearted way to come into it. Like, I, I think it's all true because I think some of what you're seeing is certainly impacting the perception of individuals and organizations. They're seeing the same things that we're seeing when it comes to, you know, headlines and different things like that. So definitely wanted to see how much of it felt accurate and then what might not necessarily be as big of a deal as as the headlines might suggest. Okay, so I'm actually really excited to hear what you two are going to put out 
in in the coming months here because it sounds like you're with the data you're observing the data working with clients so that's like the purest form that's before it's actually on the internet you're cross-referencing that with cultural trends um you know basically making that your excuse to go on tiktok you know joe <laughs> biden wouldn't approve of that by the way <laughs> but um but you're doing it anyway in the name of that's data beautiful. science and i appreciate that so it sounds like we've got a lot of good stuff to talk about here today um so just give us some sneak peeks here i'm not asking you to you know start on page one and read your 500 page report here but like what are you seeing in terms of some trends for engagement and i don't know who wants to take that first but just jump in let's have a conversation annie and i think annie's going to take that first and i'll say the the term we've been using is if the if the ebook is the scuba dive the podcast is the snorkel right we're going to take a, a okay just, good. yeah a little bit okay. beyond surface okay. level and really share some of those themes and trends okay let me get my flippers and mm -hmm. my, my dive uh, in with my us cool little, the water's okay, fine i've got I got it on Annie, so lead me here. Be my my Sherpa here in the, the data ocean of employee engagement. Indeed. So one thing that was very interesting, when the pandemic first hit, we saw an uptick in engagement, which we did not expect to see. We expected pandemic to hit, world disruption, everyone's life essentially stopping for a hot minute. We saw an increase. What we realized is that when all of that shift, that change happened, Leaders had to communicate more than they had been. We had to stay connected. What is our strategy? How are we working together to achieve this? And really partnering together in an unprecedented way, in a, in a way that some would, this is one of those pros that emerged from, from the pandemic is us having to think differently about the work and how we connect with each other. Um, and so we did see that initial uptick that was declined. It did decline after that initial uptick as Everyone was wearing those multiple hats, having to juggle the work and the home and trying to connect into a social experience or see friends virtually over Zoom, whatever that may have been. Uh, so we had seen that decline. Right now, as I mentioned, we are starting to see that rebound occur, which is exciting to see. So some organizations are still on the up. Uh, a lot of organizations, though, are really beginning to harness some of those lessons learned during the pandemic, reinforcing the communication, how that collaboration came through, really seeing those types of behaviors continue. Um, and I think in terms of one of the main things that really did emerge was this element of discretionary effort. So when we think to mm. people's performance and giving this above mm. and beyond, you know, it's been, I would say, a cultural norm to provide that 110%. I'm going to give my blood, sweat, tears, everything that I have to this organization. One of the things that we are seeing through this lens is not necessarily a large decrease, but more of this shift from people giving their all to being more ambivalent. Am I willing to give it all? Do I want to bleed, sweat, and cry <laughs> my whole heart out for this, this organization and this cause? And what is really in it for me? So we did see this element of discretionary effort, a slight decrease, but really more of that neutral score increasing. Uh, so okay. I'm a little bit un uncertain about how that uh, giving their all to the organization is going to be uh, played out, essentially. That's That's interesting. And that reminds me a little bit here about what Katie, you and I talked about about, uh, I don't know, about a month and a half, two months ago. And that was really the topic then was quiet quitting. And, and listeners, if you haven't checked it out, I encourage you to go to wherever you consume your pods, whether it's Apple or the Blueberry or whatever it is, and and uh, check out Katie's Katie's really cool pod on, on the concept of quiet quitting here. So, Katie, I'm going to hearken you back here because it sounds yeah. like, Andy, what you're inferring is this idea of quiet quitting. So catch us really quickly up on that notion, Katie. What uh, what did we talk about? Oh, gosh. What is we quiet talk, quitting? We covered a lot. And I do feel the <laughs> disclaimer to say it like, yeah, so quiet kid and quitting was like this very um, alliterative, catchy phenomenon that I think grabbed, certainly grabbed the internet, certainly grabbed my LinkedIn feed by storm. Mm -hmm. And I would be remiss, certainly, and indebted to Annie if I did not mention that this originated on TikTok. So take it for what, here comes TikTok <laughs> again. Take it for what it is, right? It was a firsthand experience of an employee talking about them starting to give less to their job. And again, a headline you see, you think it starts to grab hold. It starts to resonate. People start reposting it and kind of sharing their own experience and makes you think like, hey, like, is this really true? Is this just one person's like firsthand approach? Is this anecdotal or is there is there data that actually supports that? 
Um, and so, you know, I'm, I call it my consultant mind. I'm not really sure, or maybe mm-hmm. I'm just a cynic, but like, I was, I always kind of had like this critical approach, like, is this for real or is it no big deal? Which is actually the, the, um, yes. the title yes. of our podcast. And I won't spoil it for anyone. Um, yeah, but go I, listen to it. It's worth no, it. Yeah. Go listen to it. But I think that, you know, as we've t- taken a look at the data and as we've looked at this trend through the lens of our X model, right, through the lens of how we imp- approach employee engagement at GP Strategies, you know, you heard Annie talk about what um, somebody gets out of their job, right? So we say that's the satisfaction that they get. That's one side of the X. And then also what they give to the job. And that other side is called contribution. And so for me, when I think about something like quiet quitting or discretionary effort or giving less than that 110%, for me, that's here's another alliterative or catchy term, right? It's about somebody calibrating their contribution. Do they really okay. want to be giving as much as they have been in the past? Does work even have as big of a role in their life as it did maybe pre-pandemic? That ambivalent or neutral number that Annie referenced, I'm going to be really keeping my eye on that over the next few years because I do think many of us have either have fundamentally changed or we are in the process of con- of changing and examining and, th- and thinking about How does work work for us? And maybe that's a question we've never been able to even ask before. So this notion of calibrated contribution, still catchy, still alliterative, but I also think more reflective of what's actually happening when someone's looking at that contribution level and saying, you know what, like, I'm not, this is not working for me anymore for a variety of reasons. I'm tired. I'm burned out. Like, hey, my, you know, my personal values are maybe taking more of a front seat and I just don't want to. There's that blood, sweat, and tears again. Um, So for me, it never really meant that somebody was not showing up and doing their job. It just meant that somebody was basically doing their job and maybe not too, too, too much more. If we even back up to Annie, what I heard is that you're saying at the beginning of the pandemic, it's almost like a diet probably is like when you start a diet, you're like, oh, I am going to eat no carbs, right? And you're really excited you're fired up and you know we had that crisis the urgency mentality at the very beginning of the pandemic where when folks went virtual there was hyper communication and people were learning how to use teams and zoom and you know like you said over a few months you know you're like hmm i sure miss bread right <laughs> like <laughs> bread and pie sounds really good and you kind of go back and you take your eye off the ball And, you know, you stop over communicating and, you know, you're losing that engagement. And then over time, that's kind of settled in where where people are like, wow, I'm feeling this drop. You feel the drop in employee engagement. And so, first of all, from trend, you're saying people are saying, oh, wow, my pants are tight. I need to, I need to start, you know, eating salads again I, or, or communicating or really taking, you know, refocusing on employee engagement and what do we need to do in this new reality, whether it's virtual or hybrid or, and in the meantime, you're saying folks, uh, Katie, you're saying that individuals are going, Hmm, I need to take stock of, of my, my work life and look at this like an investment, right. And going, um, instead of just the old fashioned, I'm going to, you know, give 110%. It's more like, um, should I be putting uh, my money into this? Uh, is it, is it worth it to me to, to go 110% to give that discretionary effort? So are those diet and investment? I mean, is that kind of what we're saying here? Those are some of the early leading indicators of your research. No, I think that's very fair to say. I think, you know, when I think about this topic too, I think of how we used to use the phrase work-life balance. Those two Mm. used to exist in separate spaces. I used to go to the office or go to the plant or go to my work location. And then I would have a commute, a little bit of radio time, relaxation, and then I would come and do my home role, whatever that might be. Now, I am sitting in the same house doing this podcast (laughs) that I live, eat, work, work out, do all of my behaviors. <laughs> I live in this house now. My, my world has gotten much smaller as, as I look past the, the past few years. Um, I think it is more now of this 
work-life trade-off. And I think that is what's driving mm. employees taking that step back. I no longer have my commute. It's my life shifts. I move right from work into baby duty, into dog duty, into maybe finding 10 minutes for myself at the end of the night once the house is asleep. So I mm. think- You're spoiling all, yourself, Annie. I 10 mean, minutes? 10 Come on. minutes. I know. Who am I with this luxury, <laughs> this life of luxury I lead indeed? Yeah, so I think it has transitioned from this concept of balance and being able to understand that there could be balance to actively making trade-offs every single day. Am I going to take that personal time, go to the doctor, go to the chiropractor finally that I still have not scheduled mm. and should do? Or am I going to focus on work and work on the ebook, work on the podcast, do those deliverables that are going to help my organization achieve what it needs to? So it that element of the work has changed as well. Yeah, those those are very challenging. Um, you know, I, I don't know about you two, but I used to. Well, Katie, I know you've been working virtual for a while, but for those yep. that haven't, before it was I cool. used to when I when I when I would have my like one hour commute, uh, I'd be like, oh man, it'd be so great not to commute. And now I'm like, jeez, oh, <laughs> I would like a little time because you know I'll flip my camera around. It's like yep. when I'm done, it's like oh, I walk out that door. And then, you know, my wife is now talking to me about personal things. And I'm like, I haven't even had a second to just like <laughs> Separate. come out of my yeah. space suit here. You know, it's like, geez, man, it's, um, it's, uh, it is, these are those first world challenges that, um, you know, if you talk to someone from the 1880s, they'd be like, uh, okay, that's, that's different than us worrying about clean water and things, but still it's mentally, it, it affects your willingness to yep give it your all or, or even, you know, potentially want to stay with an organization and things like that. Not that I'm not happy at GP strategies, by the way, completely engaged here. Okay. Not neutral case. Any (laughs) higher up those things. Um, uh, Okay. So we've, you've given us a lot of good things. What are a couple of other trends that you two are seeing while you're um, doing your research here? Dish a couple more for us. I, I know your time is precious, but what are a couple more things? Well, I know you just mentioned staying with the organization. So actually retention was one of the things that we did look at in terms of this. So it's very interesting that we've seen, and Katie put it this way, I'll let her speak speak her her verbiage in a moment, but essentially- Speak your truth, Katie. Speak your truth. Uh (laughs) The the what remains the same, what's important Mm -hmm. to us. It's really the how, how we are exhibiting this, what that means to us, what those actual behaviors look like. So one thing that we did see both pre-pandemic and our data now is that employees are staying for the work itself, their ability to contribute, to do work that they're passionate about, where they can find meaning and interest. So that has remained. We also always saw folks leaving for better pay opportunities. Of course, if you want to pay me $10,000 more elsewhere, sure, sign me up over at that organization. We also saw people interested in flexible working conditions. Katie used to work from remote before It was even cool. But what we are seeing is the power of that increase. So people would leave more so now because of pay, especially with as we're looking at the the market, inflation continuously rising. My my dollar no longer buys me the same gallon of milk it used to. Additionally, those working conditions are more important, especially for folks that are wearing those multiple hats. It is needed for some folks. I need to have the flexibility to attend to my pets, children, family hobbies, life itself. Uh, So we have seen that and it's really just increased. So people are more so saying that they would leave due to the flexibility, leave due to the the compensation Mm. that's available. Very interesting. Those are, those are great leading indicators here for organizations, especially those that want to get ahead of the curve and, and positively impact their, their employee engagement. So Katie, anything else uh, on, on your end? That, that you're seeing that that's jumping out from your perspective? Well, just to, just to add on quickly to the retention piece, I think this is, you you talked about it in the front, the top of the show, right? So um, employee engagement, you can think, oh, it's kind of warm and fuzzy or whatever. This translates into hard uh, bottom line business results, right? So the cost of turnover for an organization is huge, especially voluntary turnover. And so um, to me, this is not a nice to have. This is a absolutely necessary for the survival and thriving of your business. So I just feel the need to say that like as we talk about engagement and all the different things that focusing on engagement can bring to your organization, this and, and we'll talk about this when we talk about implications, but the ability to really listen to what your employees are saying, to measure that and to take action on that, that's huge. Um, and helping people feel like they are valued and that they may want to stay for that organ to that for that organization longer. So 
um, hearing that someone might be burned out and listening to that. You may save that person from leaving the organization. And wouldn't you rather have somebody um, that stays and gives maybe just a smidge less than that one ten percent versus someone that just says, well, I'm burned out. I'm leaving because I don't feel like I really have a voice or I don't feel like anybody really understands my reality. So it didn't really answer your question, but I just felt really compelled to say that. So, well, no, I think, I think you're, you're hitting something there about that, that that's the perspective of you need to look at this just as important as your top line revenue, as your, yeah. your net profitability. This is a factor. And in some cases, especially if you are in a knowledge worker world, where you're not making whatever, you're not making a hard good, your your product is the knowledge and skills of your people, this is hypercritical, it's even more critical, uh, is that people are there, they're willing to give their all, and they're not gonna just leave at the drop of a hat. And you know, even if they're feeling that, maybe if they have enough trust that they might talk to their supervisor or leader and say, hey, I got to be honest with you. I have enough trust with you. I'm not super happy here, or maybe I want to pay raise or something like that. It's like, hey, if if you can get people at least, um, you know, talking to you versus just, you know, I, I saw the term the other day. What was it? Anger applying or something like that. Rage you, applying. Rage yes. Applying. Rage yes. applying. Thank you. That's right. <laughs> I don't know that That's for any right. personal reason. I saw it on LinkedIn. Oh, okay. <laughs> More disclaimers about. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But, you know, those are the kind of things I guess I, I was thinking about on my my end is just going, you know, it's it's almost like in the automotive world. So I, I do a lot of automotive consulting. It's, you know, one of the things that we try to do is it's almost like with customer engagement is if a customer trusts you enough and maybe they've shopped your price with somebody else, if they trust you enough, they might go, hey, um, Mike, I can get this car 20 miles down the road for this. Um, what are you going to do about it? That's a good day. That's customer engagement. And maybe the same thing for employee engagement. It's like, if somebody's like, you know, I'm not super happy here. What can you do about it? That sounds like a good day for retention. And maybe you can turn that ship around and somebody could actually maybe become your biggest advocate, um, by just coming to you with a problem. So I I'm curious if you two have, is that part of this, this concept of, of um, I, I don't know what you would call that in academic terms, but where in, managers have at least fostered enough trust where people will, will actually have a candid conversation with them. So Katie, you're, you're raising your hand. Is that something that's oh, I was pointing to a Annie. trend or uh, there is a oh, okay. term for that? And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to define What's the, the term. term Give I'm me gonna... the real term. Well, psychological safety is what I would say, right? It's where an environment okay. has been cultivated that an employee can come forward and share like, their thoughts, their emotions, their struggles, their hesitations, their failures um, without fear of retribution or judgment. They can bring their whole self to work, their identity, who they are and how they show up. And I'm so glad that you made this segue because I think I, one of the other um, pieces and trends from the research that we analyzed that I really want to have Annie talk about is the role of the leader. So this is another thing. It's like the more things change, the more things stay the same. Leaders have always been critical. It's a little bit different now, um, but that is definitely one piece that we saw in the research as we did our look back was the role of the leader in fostering that psychological safety and engagement. Go ahead, Annie. Okay. Yeah. Annie, tell us about this. Yeah, so I first want to talk about the various levels. So individual contributors. I, as an individual, it is my responsibility to understand what my satisfaction needs are or drivers are and what things might be getting in the way of my contribution. So again, looping back to that X model, what's getting in the okay. way of more satisfaction, maximum satisfaction, and my maximum ability to provide to the organization? The leader, that direct manager, is a connector. So you need to have that level of trust to be able to share those elements with them. Be open, honest, what's getting in the way, how they can help support me. And that manager needs to then act on that. If it's a process thing or connecting with another uh, area of the organization or having access to the information that I need to most efficiently do my job, that manager should be that problem solver in that. Working together, let's partner together. Who else do we need to bring in? And as we think about top of house, our, our executives, our senior leadership, they're really setting the cultural tone for the organization. And I think that one of the awesome things we saw at a lot of our organizations that we partner with, uh, especially during that initial pandemic, uh, the diet, <laughs> the initial diet phase of the pandemic, <laughs> was 
executives had always been this distant figurehead, this person that I didn't really know. I might get a communication from them. I might see them on a town hall, but who are they as a person? It's very difficult for me to trust someone that I really don't know as a person. Mm -hmm. What changed during the pandemic was that level of communication, more consistent, more regular, sharing, you know, coming, broadcasting from my home as an executive. I'm able to get a bit of a different window into that person's life, what's important to them, that we share the same fears, especially that were going on at that time. And so one of the things that emerged is we did see actually increased perceptions in both senior executives as well as managers as a result of this data. Hmm. And I think that that move away from that per that shady, sh you know, shadowy person right. over there of who are they to, oh, I understand who that leader is. I now know the names of these people at the top of house. Uh, that was really awesome to see. And I think that really successful organizations have continued those behaviors. Those executive leaders didn't begin to pull back on the communications. They've really leaned into sharing their thoughts, opinions, and having that open, transparent self. And we talk about know and show yourself enough as a leader. That's a whole separate conversation. <laughs> um, the other thing in terms of our direct manager connections, and this almost bridges into another topic as well, is not only creating psychological safety that, that we spoke about a moment ago, but in that element of connecting, what are your people looking for? And I think that one of the things that has emerged in our data is this element of growth development opportunities or career opportunities. So when we especially think about the manager, they play the most critical role there. Uh, for my team, it's important that I know their interests, what they're looking for, and what those stretch goals are, where they... and I hate the question of where do you see yourself in five years, mm -hmm. but there's an element of knowing yourself and, and a general trajectory of what you're looking for, where I, as, as their manager, can listen for opportunities across the organization, uh, get them involved in whether it's employee resource group opportunities or stretch assignments, different roles in the organization where they feel that they can align their talents and their passions and really provide in a different way outside of the standard job role to the organization. It's so cool to hear you talk about this. I can see the X model coming to life. Mm -hmm. And I can also see, you know, if I was your direct report, Annie, and I could see that type of advocacy. I mean, you can actually feel the employee engagement going up. It's like, hey, this is somebody who is my ambassador that is wanting good things for me that I know has my back that wants me to grow and thrive. I mean, that that feels good. I mean, I would want to give discretionary effort. I want to give that plus one effort in those cases. And it sounds like you can do that wherever you're at. You don't have to be sitting desk to desk with someone to forge that kind of connection. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So we've unpacked so many amazing things here today. I think we've really covered the what of what is employee engagement. We've covered the so what of why care about it. I think we were really at the phase of now what, what do you do about it? I'm sure so many of our listeners, whether you are being led by somebody or you are a leader are saying, what do we do about this right now? So Katie, what are some thoughts on how someone could take some action, learn more about this, potentially get some support on this? Absolutely. So I would guess if, if so, if you're listening to this podcast still, a thank you. B I would I would suppose or hypothesize that employee engagement in some way, shape, or form is important to you. And so um, I like how you said that. No matter where you are in the organization, engagement is really everyone's responsibility. Um, so you might be, you know, leading up. Uh, HR or, or an engagement strategy or leading up an organization and wondering how can I start to gather data from my own organization about what's happening? Um, and we can help you with that. We would love to talk to you about ways that you can not just measure from a uh, from a survey perspective, but really have a whole measurement strategy because sometimes it's much more than just the survey. There's all sorts of different measurements, uh, initiatives and different things that we can do. Um, you might be wondering after listening to this podcast, gosh, I'm a leader leader and or I, I oversee a bunch of leaders and we want to figure out how we can equip people to have those great conversations and you know rooted in psychological safety and, and talking about engagement. We can help you with that too. I would love to talk to anybody who wants to know more about equipping leaders to have those critical conversations with the people that they lead. So, um, and you might just be interested in this in general. And and uh, again, I might say, check out the ebook that's coming because there are practical implications and next steps and action items for individuals, for leaders and executives of organizations. So um, definitely encourage you to look more there and seek us out if you wanna have more conversation. 
That's great. We appreciate both of you for being on the podcast. Will you both make me a promise and and come back again because this was such a pleasure. Yes, you've made this such a warm and welcoming experience. I will absolutely be back and I don't think you could get rid of Katie if you tried. The Performance Matters Podcast is brought to you by GP Strategies. Together, we can create a world where business excellence makes possibilities achievable. You can subscribe to the show anywhere you get podcasts or listen on our website at gpstrategies.com.